Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. And in the last episode, guys, we learned a little bit more about the eccentric and powerful Theodore Gildan. The man had a lot of influence here on the island of Cordona, and he really loved his elephant, so much so that he seemed to enjoy the company of his pet more than his own daughter Imogen, who had her own set of problems from what we were able to observe. But um, we are here in the City Hall archives because we have found two potential persons of interest during our investigation that we need to talk to. The first is Imogen's boyfriend, which is in itself surprising because Imogen seemed very childlike and naive. And the other one is a potential spurned business partner of Gildan's. So that would be... There we go. Ivory Bath's construction plan. We found these in Theodore's office. And the name A. Swift was listed as a partner, but it's been crossed out. So let's go ahead and pin this and go back to the archives and see if we can narrow this down and see what the ivory baths actually are. So let's go for businesses. And I think we had tried the 1800s British period, but let's not go for that. Let's do... If it's a construction plan, it would be an official legal document, maybe? And, of course, in the old city. There we go. Registration of Gildan and Swift Limited. Notice of registration. By authority of the government of Cordona, this deed registers the creation of Gildan and Swift Limited on this, the 21st day of June, 1877. Theodore Gildan is the sole proprietor and founder of the above enterprise, and shall provide finances on the land known as the Roman Outskirts. So it's a Roman bath, maybe. Arthur Swift is a founding partner and shall provide finances and his service as archaeologist. The primary purpose of the enterprise is to perform archaeological research in the ruins located at the intersection of Bazaar Road and Arnott Street, beyond the fortification walls in Old City Cordona. The sole proprietor, undersigned, hereby agrees to fund archaeological research in exchange for ownership uh, of any uncovered items of historical value. The founding partner, undersigned, hereby waives all finders' rights and ownership of items uncovered in the archaeological dig in exchange for the exclusive right to, uh, to publication of all academic th findings thereof. Signed, Mr. Theodore Gildan and Mr. Arthur Swift. So, Gildan basically gets to keep all of the artifacts and uh, Swift just got to publish them. What was that other thing, though? But Arthur Swift had to provide finances as well, so he was getting no monetary compensation for it at all, for what he was paying. Interesting. Okay. With your love for archives, you would have made the perfect bureaucrat. <laughs> Thanks, John. Okay, where was that located at again? Bizarre Road in Arnott Street beyond the fortification walls in Old City Cordona. Okay, we've got a street. Uh, oh, there's Bizarre Road. Dawn Road, Eagle Street, Hermes Avenue, Bakery Street, <laughs> Vizier Road, Crooked Street. Where is Arn? Oh, there it is. Arnott Street. So the baths are in this area. Cool. I bet you it's... I said it was beyond the wall. So right in this area is where we need to check it out, I imagine. But um, before we do that, we're going to head to the location of where we actually know a gentleman is. And that would be the Salacia Yacht Club. Because we need to go talk to the boyfriend. And we also need to check out the garden decorations trader and get some more furniture for the house, I guess. Now, when we were on our way over here, we kept on getting like... <laughs> like surrounded with different cases and I think there's one actually outside City Hall do you have anything else to say ma'am? I'm curious oh. how did Mycroft recruit you? I doubt you're a field agent I imagine you work with intelligence that's correct your brother noticed me when I tracked down a spy at the archives that's how our cooperation began and you? did Mycroft force you into this? not at all we simply have a mutual interest in someone or something of course. A fruitful and willing collaboration, I'm sure. Well, I'm his younger brother. I have to accept the consequences of being a close relative of an official figure. I suppose, in a way, we are colleagues, Mr. Holmes. 
In the remotest way possible, Miss Oni. <laughs> so backhanded, Sherlock. <laughs> Alright, um... I didn't expect a little cinema scene there. Now, there was a case that we had... Like, as soon as we were about to come in... Worker's testimony... String theory... There it is. City Hall Square memory. A walk through the City Hall Square has unleashed an old memory. John insisted that I concentrate to recall it. Alright, City Hall memory. Let's see if anything pops up here. Guests of Cordona, the treasures await you. Collect them all and return for more. What's this now? Treasure hunt. As part of the governor's commitment to increasing tourism on Cordona, the City Hall is excited to announce a treasure hunt event. The challenge consists of three stages, each consisting of eight photographic clues, the locations of hidden treasure lock boxes, or treasure boxes. Once the participant has collected all eight, he or she must return and collect the clues for the next set of treasures. Oh my god, another case. So what's this now? Treasure Island Stage 1. Oh, that's cool. So we have to go to all of these locations. Carriage in a yard. High tower, sandy shore. Snug gazebo. Huh. So we, I guess we find the treasure, and once we find all of these, we move on to round two. I may have to do this off camera. Like, this really encourages a lot of exploration. Neat. There's a lot to do in this game. A contest for the guests. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. John? Does it look remotely familiar to you? Um... Not really. Do we have the right thing pinned? Yeah, it is pinned. Whoa! Got mannequin people. A large crowd gathered. Is that a little Sherlock? Doing his I was here, young and passionate about the truth. Mycroft stood close to me. He was keen on my attending every official event that I might prepare myself for the Crown Service. Lucky for you, that was the last time he did it. He's doing his best Phoenix Wright impersonation. Objection! Podium has appeared. There was a stage here. A tribune. This is just a tribune. Who are you? The governor gave his speech there. He was lying through his teeth and nobody noticed, or didn't want to, but I noticed. I was extremely irritated by his lies. I shouted my opinions very loudly for everyone to hear. The crowd went wild. Oh, I'm sure Mycroft loved that. Oh, yeah, he's like, time to go. You come with me. Mycroft was angry, but calm. He led me away from the stage. You get a stern talking to. Pick your battle, Sherlock, kind of thing. He told me that I should keep my mouth shut. And that silence is golden. I couldn't stand for that. Behold, Sherlock Holmes's famous adherence to justice was born here. And case complete. I really like that. It's like little character development cases. Kind of dive into Holmes' psyche and his life here on the island. It's pretty cool. Okay, um, I guess we are done with our business here. Let's... Let's go ahead and fast travel to Southern Grand Serre, near the hotel. See if we can have a chat with Imogen's boyfriend. News kiosk. All the newspapers are sold out. Well, fine. Be that way. Now, let's go back to Gilded Cage. There it is. Photo of Imogen. A photo of Imogen with a young man. On the back of the frame is a note. This victory is for you and you only. 
1879 race finals for my lighthouse in the darkest storm, Paul. Paul Perks is a professional yachtsman who sails the Whirlpool at Salacia Yacht Club at Southern Grand Serre. Okay. Now, the, one of the primary reasons I want to question Paul is because we found that sailor's knife. What was it, a bosun's knife? And that has a lot of potential. Oh. Do you have any the new clothes? The finest clothes for the finest people on the island. The finest clothes for the finest citizens. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah, this is a lot of the same stuff. Hmm. I wonder if any, if, wow, <laughs> Red Queen dress. I'm curious if any of these clothing stores have like one or two unique pieces that you can only get there. Because I'm, uh, yeah, I see some more hats than normal. Mustaches, makeup, <laughs> deluxe glamour. Fabulous, darling. Oh, we can rent them. That's cool. Of course, think it over. Take your time. In case we need them for a case or something. I don't know why you would or how you would rent um face makeup, but <laughs> art trader. I like art. Masterpieces by local artists at an affordable price. My goods will brighten up your house. The Holmes family, a portrait depicting the pain of getting kids to sit still. So this is just all stuff that belonged to the house that got sold off in that estate sale. Violet's portrait, irreplaceable? Old drawing of a young friend, it's like he's really there. John, 1865. Okay, we are buying all the things. Good lord, don't want anyone else to buy them. Enjoy your purchase. I don't know if I should like you, ma'am. Okay, was there... Who else was here? Oh yeah, the garden decoration trainer. Garden statues, swings, and even more. Didn't I just talk to you? My goods will brighten up your house. Swing chair. Wooden bench. All the comfort of sitting on a rock but with splinters. Alright. We'll grab all of those. Oh. David and Goliath, a statue honoring the terrifying power of short people. Um, David is dressed like a sailor scout. Enjoy your purchase. Okay, I did not expect that. Hello, sir. Help me, please. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's beyond my knowledge. Fine. So... Got clubs right over here. Oh, look. There's right where the photo got taken. Interesting. How about you, sir? You have anything to say? Can I ask you a question? That's a question I can answer. Photo of Imogen. Yacht Club members mentioned that Paul missed the race, and no one has seen him since this morning. He might be in his room in the workshop south of the Yacht Club. All right, cool. Let's go, uh, oh, got a sign here. No women allowed. No smoking in the workshop. Clean up after yourself. Only dry shoes at the club. Don't touch any yacht that you don't own. Violators will be subject to severe fines and exclusion from the club. Yaza. Okay, so we can't actually go into the club itself. Is this the workshop down here? Wait, let's... I'm always paranoid about um, brass doorknobs in these games because another Frogware game, uh, Sunken City, the only buildings you could go into, I believe, had brass doorknobs. So anytime I see that, I'm just like, oh, and I realize that I'm not playing Sunken City anymore. 
Okay, there's the workshop. Is there anything else we need to look at over here? Wow. That boat had took a lot of damage. You know, that's one thing. I, I have some friends who own boats, and my dad owned a boat for a little bit. It was just a small, small little kind of fishing rowboat thing. But I've noticed from my experience talking to these folk that unless they dedicate their lives to boating and go out a lot, it is such a money pit. It's like having to maintain the boat and take care of it. Like, I, I think a lot of people regret their purchase unless they could use it all the time. Like, my brother, for example, had two jet skis that he loved, but he never had a lot of opportunities to take them out, so... He just kind of sat there and needed repairs. Let's go in here. Yacht Club Workshop. And, oh, this is a combat place. Because of the fire extinguishers. If I see the fire extinguishers, I know we are about to get into a scrap. Okay, so... The question is, who's going to want to scrap with us? Not exactly sure what we're looking for. Hopefully it will reveal itself. Whoa! Uh, hi, John. Enjoying a float? Oh, there's something over here too. I have to say though, before... Okay, that's the Whirlpool. I believe that is Paul's boat. I love the fact that they have... Um, him in all of these like different situations and not just standing there. John's just enjoying his life. Or whatever it is. Okay, what we got here? Fresh lacquer the layer. Champions whirlpool. Pools bread and butter. Okay, we got some stains. Oh. Go into the storage, that's nice. A foghorn to navigate and warn others at sea. It should have a warning to cover your ears. What do we got here? Oh, it's another one of the books. Adventures of Nabe and Laura, Sails of Hatred. Sails of Hatred. I suppose there is something for everyone. Including champions. Who knew archaeology could be so exciting? Exciting is certainly a word. <laughs> okay, anything else in here? Doesn't look like it. I saw some other... The champions. 1861 to 1866. We got Valhalla, Serenity, captained by Malcolm Reynolds, Hannibal, the Cuttlefish, the Zephyr, and the Whirlpool. Why is that... It looks a little bit different than the others. Hmm. Oh, Whirlpool has its own office. Bloodied bandages. Has someone been hurt? Where would a champion hide a key? I'll bet you he hid it right over here. Do I have to pin something? Yacht Club Workshop. I found the place where Paul Perks works. There we go. Ooh, there's a little bit of blood on it. I hope Paul is more skilled at yachting than he is at hiding keys. Do -do 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 -do. Zelda sound. Alright, let's go ahead and check out the Whirlpool's office. What do we got here? Construct. Can modify. Work on the bow. Too expensive. Work on the rudder. Hmm. 
old betting slips, Paul always bets on Whirlpool, one victory after another. All right. Oh. You gormless, gilly wetfoot. Okay. You think you can leech off my family, steal my money, exploit my daughter? This ends today. Your career is over. I shall give you one final warning. If you refuse to cooperate, you'll find yourself in deep water. Gildan. Mr. Gildan wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Threats and envelope, okay. To earn big, you have to spend big. No. Oh. Salacia so Bookmakers Tournament Race. Whirlpool to win. 100 stake, 600 winnings. You do not get to back out of our deal. You do not get to leave on a whim. We need you to get us fresh waves for our tea part. Leaves. Leaves for our tea party. If you have any questions, the boys will be keeping an eye on you at the race. An interesting place for a message to a champion. Hmm. Additional earnings to sweeten the victory. Suspicious note. An expensive set of tools for woodwork. An amateur wouldn't know how to use these. Makes sense. Those darts? A box full of darts. Each has a needle and can be loaded with drugs. Did Goliath get shot by a dart and that's why... Ooh. Shipbuilding, shipwrights tricks, sail weaving... Okay, I am very curious about this. Looks like we have some new Mind Palace clues. Let's see. Nothing there. Okay. Um, Theodore Gildan removed Arthur Swift from their plant. Okay. Theodore Gildan threatened an end to Paul Perk's yachting career if the relationship with Imogen continued. Suspicious note. Box of darts, uh-huh. So what are we looking for now? Guess Paul got in. Oh. oh, I thought that was a thing we could touch. Got in with some bad apples. Oh, tea caddy, not smeared. Oh, well, that's not tea. Undeniably psychotropes, not for toothache, I think. A typical tea tin. I wonder what he has for biscuits. That's right. Alright. I found psychotropes smuggled in a tea caddy hidden inside the workshop storage room. The storage room held evidence that Paul's involved in organized crime, sm smuggling psychotropics on the yacht. The plot thickens. So, where do we need to Oi. go? Hands off my possessions before you lose your fingers. Are you illiterate? The rules are written everywhere. Ah, Mr. Perks, the cabin boy himself. Champion, you mean. I was right. You are illiterate. I think a couple of shiners might teach you. One last chance. Who are you? That is an interesting choice for a voice. Um... Yeah, I don't want to say we're Mr. Gildan's friend. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a friend of our mutual acquaintance, Miss Imogen. Look, you artichoke. Imogen has no friends. Except for me. If you must try to insult people, it's better to know the meanings of the words that you're using. 
You fancy you could teach a sailor to swear? Go ahead. Show me how inventive you are. Stand still for a moment. Observe. What is it with um, characters in this game only having one sleeve rolled up? Smooth Adam's apple. Female. Oh, well, that explains the voice. Gotcha. Bandaged arm, payback, or accident? Developed female body, wide hips. And that's a interesting twist. Swollen elbow, hit something hard. Maybe he got it when he slammed against the that shed when Goliath threw the gate open. Paul Perks is a woman who disguises herself as a man to achieve a higher social position. She uses the privileges of men to pursue her personal goals. She puts all of her effort into sport, even though it comes with the occasional accident on the open sea. Bruises and an injured arm are badges of honor in this dangerous sport. She is a fearless yachtswoman and will not give it up, even when it costs her. And yet this is a man's prerogative. I see no reason to disclose to anyone else. She uses her career in yachting to cover, to smuggle goods for various gangs on Cordona. Her injured arm reflects her, the dangerous nature of her life. Despite her fearless exterior, she is frequently in trouble due to her connections with the criminal underworld. And yet she has earned a place in that world as Paul. I see no reason to disclose to anyone otherwise. Um... Do we know that she's a professional smuggler? Like, I, I know we have the evidence that she smuggled, but is she is like, is that her profession? Because remember, um, oh, what's it? Uh, Theodore said that you don't get to back out. Hmm. I wonder if the smuggling's just a one-time thing. Because Paul makes a bunch of money on the betting. Um. Hmm. What do we do here? Okay, you know what? We're going to go with professional yachtswoman. I, 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 my instinct is said smuggler and the, you know, we've got the proof, but something about this just doesn't seem right to me. <sighs> yeah, let's just go with yachtswoman. That was probably really stupid. <laughs> I'm impressed by how well a woman can handle a yacht and endure so many hardships on the open sea. The revelation of your nature could well humiliate so many rich men here. Not to mention how you have broken the rules. But I understand. You've done this to forge a real career in the sport. But tell me something. Has no one asked you why you don't grow a beard? Shh. Have you been following me? You better not be wanting to end my career, because I swear you'll regret it if I get out it. Damn you, Paul. I'm sick of... Who's this peacock? Does he know who I am? I definitely know who you are not. Well, here comes the You're combat. You're not a dictionary reader, at least. I wanted to see how you... pals interact with each other in your natural habitat. <laughs> the good, bad, the ugly reference. I love that. But I'm afraid I have to interfere. Okay, I guess these are the... Paul's business associates. Okay, what we got? Ow. Don't bother moving. Ow. Uh. Nice. No more crime for you until next month. Spinning elbow. So what do I do with you? I don't want to kill you. Um, let's use... Oh. 
There we go. Another Don't spinning elbow. Move. Give him the pepper snuff. Oh, there's more. Okay. Uh. Ah! Pocket sand. Nope. I can overcome the brute now. I do not want to die here. There we go. Don't bother moving. You've lost. Holy crap, there's more? Okay. Oh, you got a lot of things. I am almost dead. Too simple. The snuff's ready. Love it. Oh no. Oh, I missed the pocket sand. Okay, you need to stop peppering me. I'm coming for you. Don't bother moving. You've lost. Okay. We need to Hi John. <laughs> Look at John. Okay, this way, buddy. There we go. Don't cry, you'll live. Okay. John just out there sailing the seas. There's no reward for risking our lives. Paul's explanation will suffice. But where's Paul? It's Paul. Okay. Paul's in the office. And I was not paying attention to the time, guys. Holy crap. All right. Um, this seems like a perfect time to go ahead and end the episode. Um, I may have made the right, the wrong call, excuse me, uh, calling Paul a uh, yachtsman instead of a smuggler. But I guess we'll figure out what happens as we go along here. But I um, hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.